morning, Hugh. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Philadelphia. Hey, listen. Just because the weekend don't mean you have to be out every weekend. Some of y'all need to stay y'all butt at home sometimes. I got friends that go out every weekend. Let them miss you sometime, man. Like, you don't have to be out every weekend. Pace yourself, people. Yeah. Hey, that's ridiculous. ridiculous. It, it's a marathon, not a sprint. All right, good morning, everyone. We got a lot to get to today, including a major prize we'll tell you about coming up in a little bit here. And here we'll get to the Phillies. Obviously, some news with an injury. The roster is pretty much set for opening day. Your guy, hey. Johan Rojas, is going to make it. Yeah, he's going to make it, but... There's some pitching concerns now with Tywin Walker. We'll get to that, but Hugh. Hasn't there always kind of been? Well, there has been, but now it's official because he's on the IL. Oh, we'll get to the Phillies coming up. Jim Salisbury is going to join us one hour from now. His take on the Phillies. We get close to opening day here, but it is the NFL owners meetings. Howie's going to speak later on out in Arizona. And Hugh, I I was thinking about the Eagles and what they've done this offseason. And I think for the most part, as it's gone by day by day, we've, we've liked a lot of the moves here that they've done. But on what was it, late Friday, early Saturday, I saw the news that Legereus Sneed had gotten traded from the Chiefs yeah. to the Tennessee Titans, and the cost wasn't that much. Sneed is a really good player, obviously helped the Chiefs win the last couple of years, including a big part of the, the team this past year. They trade him. It's it's not it's a day two pick. It's nothing crazy that the Titans gave up. And I, and I started thinking about the Eagles offseason and what they've done here so far. And while they've gotten, I'd say, a little bit better than they were at the end of last season, that's not a very high bar because they weren't a very good football team at the end of the season. And then I thought about, like, really, what have they done so far? And they brought in a pass rusher, but he's been a part-time pass rusher in his career. They brought in a defensive back. I like it, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, but he's been injured a lot the last couple of years. They brought in a linebacker, Devin White, who was once a high pick. But he hasn't been very good the last couple of years. Yeah, you got you got. The, it's almost like I, I know you're going like the Island of Misfit Toys type situation. A little bit, or big names that maybe haven't played as big as their name has been. And obviously, Saquon Barkley is the biggest name, and he's a good player. But they got a lot of production out of the running back last year, and the guy they brought in actually had worse numbers, yards per carry than DeAndre Swift. My point is, they've gotten a little bit better, but they've also lost Jason Kelsey. They lost Fletcher Cox to retirement. I'm not satisfied. I, I don't think they have done enough. I'm not satisfied with this offseason as is. And then, Hugh, I heard Elliot say this this morning on the morning show, and I was like, well, well wait a second here, because they haven't done enough. Here's Elliot this morning. Yeah, I think you could take a step further and say this is pretty much the roster you're going to see. Look, there's still plenty of time, and we've seen him make acquisitions. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson in training camp. James Bradbury, I believe, was it was a July or, or, or a yeah. July or yeah, it was. signing. So, so there yeah. are chances. But for the most part, like, this is the roster. They'll, they'll draft somebody in the first round, presumably, uh, unless they trade back. But yeah, I, I you know, they, I think they want to address the corner position to, to add um, some depth there, a guy, a guy that can develop into a starter in the draft. Uh, obviously, linebacker, even after adding Devin White, you probably want to see something there. But the first big wave of free agency is over. So I, I think at this point, like, this is pretty much the roster you're going to see, maybe one or two players. But I, I don't expect massive overhauls to what the 53-man roster will look like from here on out. Well, then I'm not satisfied. I I don't think they've done enough to go win a Super Bowl. Hugh, are you satisfied with this offseason so far from the Eagles? Uh, So far, so good. I mean, it does kind of – it's troublesome that the two corners, it sounds like, are probably going to be the starters. But I look at it like this, Joe. This is going to be an offensive-centric team like we kind of already knew it was going to be. So I think that that's why it's not that big of a deal for Howie to, to go out and get corners right now. Now, as the season progresses and this, this defense evolves and everything, that might become more of an issue. But I think right now, initially, they're going to do their best to try to go into the season with these guys. I'm, I'm not happy about it, but like I said, if we're scoring 30 or 40 points a game and that's what we're averaging some, somewhere around there, then I, I think that this defense will be okay because your offense is going to be so prolific. Yeah, this is what I heard last year, and it didn't work. <laughs> I mean, it did. I mean, they, they worked. This is true. Their this offense true. wasn't as good as we hoped. Now, I th- there's a chance this year's offense sh- could and should be better, right? Saquon could be an upgrade over DeAndre Swift. I think we, they expect him to be. And we hope Jalen is better, and, and obviously the coordinator switch is a big deal. I'm just talking about the players they brought in versus the players they've lost. Like, I – They've gotten a little bit better than they were last year, but not significantly. And, Hugh, you brought up the corner stuff, and that, that's what caught me when the, when the uh, Snead trade went down. It's like, wait a second. That's the guy they needed. They, they needed to upgrade the cornerback position. They lost uh, Avante Maddox a free agent. At least he's still a free agent. So maybe Chauncey gardner Johnson's is going to play the slot. Okay. Well, then you still need a safety in here. You still need a corner. I'm looking at the depth chart right now, and I see a lot of question marks. I, I, th- I go throughout the depth chart right now, 
today, and I know I realize today is March 25th, but as is, like right now, I see a major question mark at third receiver. Devontae Parker hasn't gotten open in years. I see a major question mark at right guard because obviously Jurgens moves over to center. I see a major question mark with Bryce Huff. Can he be an every down player or more of an every down player? I see a major question mark. Like Kobe Dean is, is uh, slated as a linebacker. Devin White as a linebacker. Man, and the two corners, Hugh, Bradbury and Slay, that's the one thing that they couldn't cover last year, especially yeah. Bradbury. Yeah, that, that kind of bothers me a little bit. And I know I know Slay still has some good f- football left in him. I don't, I don't want to sit here and act like Slay's a bum because he's not. Or, or use that word to describe Darius Slay. He's fine, yeah. He's, he's, fine. he's a fine player. But I think that when you're asking, or what, what I've seen be asked of the corners that were in Miami, you know, come up and be help and run support and things of that nature, I don't think he's going to do that. And I think that's not the style of football that he's going to play. You see a lot of these young corners nowadays, especially the ones that play in the playoff scenarios, they were coming up in run support and they were making a lot of tackles. A lot of corners made a lot of tackles in the playoffs. I just don't foresee him doing that. I don't foresee him being that type of guy. Well, you know, I don't know what he is at this point, and I don't know if Bradbury could cover anymore. All I know is I went in an upgrade a corner, and I haven't gotten it yet. 215-592-9494. Are you satisfied with this Eagles offseason as is? I mean, Elliot this morning saying this is basically it, like they'll add in the draft, but that's a lot to ask. It's a lot to ask a rookie corner to come in and play and boom and hit right away. I mean, if that's their plan, that's a lot. Legere's seed was out there. I mean, that what the Titans paid for him was not a big price at all. I, I saw that trade. I was like, wait a second. The Eagles have cap room. The Eagles have, you know, picks in this draft. They have nine picks in this draft. I mean, they have the ability to make a trade like that, and yet they didn't go about and do it. Like that blew me away. 215 592 9494. That's how you hop aboard here on this Monday. We're three days from open a day. We'll do a lot of baseball today with the Taiwan Walker injury. But I saw the Steve trade go down. I heard Elliot this morning. I'm like, he was wait a little jealous. Yeah, well, I'm I'm surprised that that the Eagles he didn't was, make a move. It feels like they they went all in early, right? They they did a lot early, and they just kind of have stopped now. And I'm wondering what is the plan here for the rest of the offseason? Yeah, I I think that looking at the situation and knowing what I think that I know, of potentially about Coach Fangio's defense, is that this is something that's still kind of fluid. You got to go into the to the. Uh, regular season to see what you're going to get from that position. Maybe some of these young guys emerge. Maybe maybe it kind of plays out the way that I thought it would, you know, with Ricks and, and Ringo. Maybe that's the case. And if they outplay these other guys, then maybe that's a move that you make later in the season. Because if I'm not mistaken, not, not knowing the logistics of the money and everything, like you'll take a bigger cap hit if they get cut now as opposed to if you wait closer to the season. Yeah, well, yeah, if it's after June 1st, it's less money you have to you have to lose in the cap. I'm not even worried about cutting them. I'm worried about who's playing if they're not here, right? Like it's I, yeah, I'm done with Bradbury. Bradbury could could get cut today, tomorrow, on, before the opener of the season, but they haven't got another corner. It's it's bizarre how this offseason has gone where it feels like they're going to rely on either Bradbury and Slater bounce back, maybe Chauncey Gardner-Johnson could stay healthy and play a slot. But then, Hugh, it's a lot of guys with unknowns. I mean, Isaiah Rogers, who they signed last year, we'll see. Your guy, Keely Ringo, Eli Ricks. But that's, like, Legereus Steed was just traded for a third-round pick. That was the move. I mean, that was the move, right? If I had told everyone four weeks ago, the Eagles could get Legereus Steed for a third-round pick and they have the cap room to do it, I think everyone would have said, go do that. Yeah, but maybe, who knows, maybe the, maybe the, um, the asking price changed as we, we progressed through the weeks because he was kind of hot the first couple of weeks mm-hmm. of free agency. And then all of a sudden it, it probably changed. Who knows? Who knows? But that is kind of curious that his name was one of the hot names. And then as the weeks progressed, the Eagles weren't even in on, on that on that trade uh, scenario. It doesn't make any sense. 215-592-9494. Quickly before we go to the phone lines here, we'll get Kyle's take. And just to give you an update, so NFL win totals are up over at DraftKings. The first ones, it's a big day when uh, win totals drop. So the Eagles right now are at 10.5, which is an interesting number. So it is less, obviously, than they won last year. It's one game less than their win total was before last season. Before last year was 11.5. But here's what I find interesting about it. So the uh, the Ravens, Chiefs, and 49ers are above at 11.5 on their win total. Mm-hmm. The Eagles are in a, a mix of a bunch of teams at 10.5. Eagles, Cowboys, Falcons, Packers, Lions, Bengals, they got the Dolphins. Falcons, at 10.5. Falcons are 10.5. Mm, interesting. So right now. 
right now. And if you look, some of them are juiced certain ways, so kind of what's more likely over or under. But if you look right now, the Eagles are, according to DraftKings, according to one sports book, below the 49ers and on the same par or very similar to the Cowboys, Falcons, Packers, Lions. Hmm. Which, which tells me that the, the betting market thinks they're – you know, a, a playoff team, but not like the best. Not like well, not like near the top of the NFC. I mean, I think that's kind of interesting too, because you have what the 49ers head and shoulders above yes. everybody else, and then you have like the the rest of the NFC kind of tightly packed together. Tight. I'm okay with that, Joe. I mean, because it's still kind of early in the game. We still haven't had the draft, and a lot of these things are just you know we're we're so so juiced about football and, and coming back. Those numbers don't bother me as much as they bother you right now. So I'm not bothered. I just want more. I mean, like it just tell all it tells me is the Eagles are a playoff team. You know, a, a, a probably a five or six or seven seed, and that's it. I think that's right now for for what they were last year. I think that's pretty good to be to be honest. But is that what we want? Well, it's that not was what last we want. Year. But we, there's some intangibles there, Joe. With our quarterback, we still don't know. I think he's going to bounce back. Let me say that first. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to bounce back. But I think realistic realistically, when you look at it. I mean, I think that's fair because when you talk about all those other teams for the Eagles to be right there, I was kind of surprised about the uh, Atlanta Falcons with the quarterback who's coming off an Achilles injury being right there with you, but that division is kind of weak. But to be right there with the Green Bay Packers and we saw the growth of their young, mm-hmm. young quarterback, the Rams and all those other teams, I think that's a fair place to be. I think it is fair, but that's why I want Howie to do more. I, I don't want the Eagles just to be a five seed in the playoffs.